the impact of HTTPS interception. Uh, thank you. Uh, this, I, today I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about HTTPS interception and the impact it's having on the security of the internet as a whole. This was joint work between the University of Michigan, University of Illinois, UC Berkeley, and also with a number of industry partners at Cloudflare, Mozilla, and Google. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank Peter Bowen, who is fundamental in making this work possible, but who is not an author. So over the last few years, there's been much ado about HTTPS interception. If we go back to 2015, I think many of you will remember when Superfish, a piece of adware, was found to be shipped on a large number of Lenovo laptops, and essentially it intercepted TLS connections in order to inject ads. Um, but it didn't validate certificates correctly, so it placed a large number of users at risk for all of their HTTPS communication. Uh, then later in 2016, news came again when Firefox had to essentially roll back its deprecation of SHA-1 because older antivirus products were presenting SHA-1 certificates to browsers. And last year at NDSS, there was work uh, that essentially showed that a large number of antivirus products were intercepting TLS all over the place, and many of, many of them had very poor, uh, very poor security across the board, but including in their TLS implementations. And even just last week, T Google actually rolled back their deployment of TLS 1.3 in Chrome because it was found that uh, middle boxes made by Bluecoat essentially were dropping TLS 1.3 connections instead of correctly downgrading them to 1.2, essentially blocking Chrome users from accessing the internet and accessing Chrome services. But despite all of this evidence across the board, there's actually been still rather a small amount of investigation of how much interception was truly happening and what did it really mean for the security of the internet as a whole. And so we set out in this study to essentially answer those two questions. One, how much HTTPS interception is really occurring? And two, what does it mean for the internet ecosystem? Network middle boxes, client-side security software such as antivirus, and malware intercept HTTPS connections by acting as transparent proxies. They essentially, the browser starts a normal HTTPS connection, but this is then terminated by that piece of software, which will then inspect, modify, maybe inject ads, do whatever it wants to that plain text HTTP content, and then it'll initiate a new connection to the destination website. And now normally this type of interception would not be possible because of HTTPS. We use HTTPS in order to make sure we're performing secure connections to the correct destination website, that we know that we're actually connecting to Bank of America and not some imposter between us and that network. And the way that these software and these middle boxes get away with this, essentially, is that when they're deployed on a network, an administrator will create a local root CA certificate. And they will deploy this on all machines within their network. And a similar kind of process happens with antivirus software. When you install the antivirus software, it will inject a root certificate into your local trust store. And then later on, when you go to make a connection to some destination website, in real time, that middle box or that antivirus software will forge a certificate for that website, which will present it to you, and that will link up to your local root CA. And as a user, you don't really notice this happens unless you go and you manually look at the certificate and notice the trust chain doesn't go to DigiCert or to Semantic. It goes to one of these local CAs. So that's how interception works, but how do we measure the total amount of interception that is occurring in practice? Well, we make this key observation that when middle boxes terminate a TLS connection and reinitiate it, they will use a different TLS library or different TLS implementation than is used in the browser. Oftentimes they'll use standard libraries such as OpenSSL instead of using NSS, which is the type of library that Firefox includes within its browser. And this means that websites can potentially detect when interception is occurring if they can detect a mismatch between the browser behavior and the browser that the user is using in the software that is being used to essentially facilitate this TLS connection. So how do we fingerprint different network layers? Essentially, we try to figure out how to distinguish what is being used for the HTTP connection and what is being used for the TLS connection. 
For HTTP, this is rather easy because the browser actually announces this itself. Um, there's an HTTP header that the client sends called the user agent, and it provides a programmatically parsable value that says, this is what operating system I'm using, this is what browser I'm using, and here's other information that helps the website essentially render itself correctly. Unfortunately, there isn't such a convenient field in TLS. There isn't something that says, I'm using OpenSSL, or I'm using NSS. Instead, we set off to build a set of heuristics that based on the behavior of the TLS library would allow us to identify the implementation. And in order, to in order to explain how this works in practice, I want to take a step back to the TLS handshake. And uh, very much to the opposite of the last talk, TLS has been designed to be incredibly extensible. Um, there are hundreds of different cipher suites that TLS supports. There are dozens of elliptic curves, of signature algorithms, and there's nearly a dozen just extensions, such as the heartbeat extension, that allows additional functionality to be added on top of the TLS protocol. And the way all of this gets negotiated in the handshake is, in the first message, the client sends a client hello message. And it essentially provides a list of all the features it supports in a preferred order. It says, I support AES GCM-based ciphers. I support RC4. I support uh, this specific elliptic curve. And it provides these lists. And then the second message of the handshake, the server essentially goes through and it selects which of those parameters are agreeable to it. Hopefully, this would mean the most secure cipher suite that both parties support. So if different products support different features, we may be able to distinguish the product based on what it lists in this message. And to take a quick example, uh, here I'm showing the, essentially the, hand, the client hello message that is generated by Firefox and then GNU TLS, the popular library. And you can notice right away, even if we start with extensions, that while some of the same extensions are provided in both, Firefox, for example, always provides the SNI extension first. And this is actually hard-coded into the library. It will always provide this extension as the first extension it is going to send. Similarly, we'll notice that there are certain ciphers that GNU TLS supports, uh, such as Camellia-based ciphers, that Firefox does not support. And so if you see a handshake that has a Camellia-based cipher, you know right away this handshake was not generated by Firefox because Firefox never supported this cryptographic cipher. It's not possible for Firefox to generate this client hello message. And this continues on for many of the extensions. One of them, the simplest to detect is no modern browser su supports the TLS heartbeat extension. But most libraries, such as OpenSSL, do. And it's kind of a dead giveaway. When you see a handshake that has the heartbeat extension listed on it, you know it wasn't actually originating from a web browser. We investigated the TLS client hello messages that were generated by the four most popular browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari, as well as common libraries such as OpenSSL, popular antivirus products, and the default configurations of network middleboxes. And we found that every product we tested produced a unique TLS client hello message. There was none that were shared across different products, just because there are so many different options that libraries can configure and use. And we found that browsers oftentimes won't produce a static message because, for example, if, you're, if your machine does not have hardware-based AES acceleration, Chrome will prefer cha-cha-based ciphers over AES. And so you'll see different messages that come out of different browsers. However, you can determinis deterministically decide whether or not a handshake was produced by a certain browser based on whether it supported certain features. So we built a set of heuristics that essentially would allow us to determine whether a client hello message was incompatible with a given browser. We then deployed these heuristics for a one-week period at three large service providers. Uh, the Mozilla Firefox update servers, which every Firefox client connects to once a day to check for updates. At the Cloudflare CDN, a very large service provider that processes traffic for about 3 to 5% of the internet, of all traffic on the internet. And then a very large e-commerce site who asked to remain anonymous, but I can assure you all of you have heard of and likely used. So over this week, we observed uh, approximately 8 billion handshakes that we analyzed. And we see a varying amount of interception across these different perspectives. Um, but I think the important thing to look at here is we see between 4 to 11% based on these, these three network providers. 
which is about an order of magnitude more than we previous believed. And there is a fair amount of variation. Um, and some of this we can explain right away. We know that Firefox, for example, many antivirus products don't intercept Firefox connections because it has its own root store. We also know that Firefox is often less deployed in enterprise environments. In Cloudflare, uh, likely some of the traffic may be due to abuse. Um, they are a DDoS provider, and we treat it more as an upper bound. But in the end, though, we estimate that between 5 to 10 percent of all HTTPS connections are intercepted. Now, if interception products are doing their job correctly, if they're using high security libraries, if they've been well developed, you can say, well, maybe this isn't a worry. Maybe we shouldn't be concerned that interception is happening. There are legitimate reasons that organizations may be wanting to monitor the traffic that's leaving them. But is that really happening in practice? We measure the security impact of interception by essentially grading the security features that are, that are advertised by the client hello message in the intercepted connection in the original browser. And based on this, based on looking on essentially before and after the middle box or the antivirus software, we can calculate the change in security that is due to these products. To quantitatively describe this change, we developed a letter grade based uh, grading scale based on the features advertised. That essentially ranges from an optimal connection, what you'd expect to see from an up to date version of Chrome or Firefox, all the way down to F, which was severely broken, meaning that an, an active man in the middle attacker could pretty easily intercept the connection. And for a quick example of what I mean by that is, this, if you look at the Cypher suites advertised by a client, we can see here that this one supports single des, which was a Cypher suite that was broken many, many years ago. And essentially, if your client is advertising support for that, we know that it can be intercepted by someone who can break a des connection, which is possible on essentially standard hardware at this point in time. We again see this kind of varying degree of security impact. Um, for a modest number of connections, we'll actually see increased security. Oftentimes, this is due to very out-of-date browsers or clients. But on the other side, we see that a large number of connections, between 16 to 37 percent, are severely broken by the middle box. And this or our software. And when we see severely broken, this is essentially the F on our grading scale. This means that that connection can be intercepted by an active attacker on the internet. It's using something like anonymous cipher suites. It's using single des. And one thing I want to know is that a lot of this appears to be due to middle boxes rather than client-side software. Many of these middle boxes will include HTTP headers, which allow us to differentiate the two types of classes of products, because these HTTP headers will be used to essentially manage a large number of connections. And what we see there is that nearly 60% of connections that go through a middle box are severely broken. They can be intercepted by someone else later on the internet. So why is security suffering so badly? To answer this question, we investigated the default configurations used by popular middle boxes and also common antivirus products that we know that are intercepting connections. And we essentially went out and got the demos and the trials of products from large companies such as A10 and Bluecoat, and we deployed these, and we looked at the default configuration. If you did not manually adjust settings, what would the security be of the connections you produce on the internet? And when we do this, we see numbers that are pretty similar to what we saw in the network traffic. We see that when we look at client-side security products, none increase security, and half of them produce connections that are severely broken in their default state. And a very similar process, uh, or similar numbers emerge in the middle box space as well, where the default configurations for these network products are just severely broken out of the box, unless you know which cipher suites you need to go and disable manually. And I'd also note that in this grading scale, we say that some have the same security, and this is looking at only TLS. But HTTPS is a lot more than HTTP and TLS in 2017. There are a lot of new features, such as validation against certificate transparency servers, as well as HPKP and these other features that have been added in the browser, and none of these products are supporting those additional HTTPS features. We disclosed these vulnerabilities in August 2016. Um, there's been a variety of responses. Um, we've seen from some manufacturers, they put out patches right away. Many of them knew about the problems already and were in the process of fixing them. 
In other cases, we received responses ranging from companies who said, this is up to the user. Um, the default configuration is really not our problem. If you as an administrator don't know how to deploy the middle box, that's a you problem, um, which was rather disappointing. But we really saw the whole gamut in response. How do we move forward from this? So we've, we've painted this pretty dismal picture of the current state of middle boxes and of interception. And the security community has been complaining about this for years. Uh, a, a consortium of banks came to TLS 1.3 recently and said, we need to have more features that allow us to more safely intercept uh, connections. And the community came back and said, no. Um, TLS is meant to be a secure protocol. We are not adding a weakness so that you can intercept connections. And so we have this problem where we have these two sides that are kind of yelling past each other, and we've ended up in the worst of these two situations. We're in a situation where we know that middle box vendors are not doing this correctly. We know that antivirus products are not doing this correctly. And at the same time, standard bodies are saying, not our problem, don't intercept connections. But organizations do want to intercept connections. We're seeing this in the traffic. And we need to come to consensus if we're gonna work through this. We need to decide, is this allowable? If it is, how do we facilitate this in TLS libraries? How do we facilitate this in protocols? And if it's not allowable, browsers need to stop allowing connections to be intercepted. We also, I think, need to consider the fact that we've mixed the HTTP and TLS layers in the creation of HTTPS. All of a sudden now, there are features that are essentially would belong in TLS that are being enforced by the browser, not TLS libraries. And so when vendors deploy common TLS libraries, they're missing a, su a subset of these features. And I think we should investigate extending the protocol. If we know this is a real world need, we need to have a serious conversation about how we're gonna handle this in the future. So we showed that web servers can detect interception by detecting a behavior mismatch between the TLS and HTTP library, and we can use this to measure interception. We deploy these heuristics at three large service providers, and we estimate that between five to 10% of HTTPS connections are intercepted. And as a class, these interception products are severely reducing the security of HTTPS connections compared to those generated by modern browsers. Thank you. So we have time for a few questions.